Hello, this is Adam Began, and I'm the host of Historically Haunted Show, where I talk about some very rare historical and haunted locations that I visited. I also interview some of the very best in the paranormal and cryptozoology field. So tune in every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Paranormal King Radio Network. And prepare to be educated about the unknown. Hey, historians, welcome back to another great episode of the Historically Haunted Show. This week, like no exception, I have another great guest. I've had her on before um, on my vodcast, but it was with a couple other uh, people. So it's kind of cool to sit down with her one on one. Um, she is the uh, on the board of directors, also a member of the Warren Legacy Foundation for Paranormal Research. She's also the founder and the host, host S, of Exploring the Paranormal Vodcast. Um, and she also is the founder uh, and head explorer of the Exploration Paranormal that she runs with her, her family. And we're going to dive right into that. Let's talk about to the author, as it is with her book coming out. We'll talk, talk about that. Heather Lee Landon, PhD. Hi, Heather. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing excellent. Excellent. I'm glad you, uh, you're you a busy girl and you got a lot going on with your family, of course, as I mentioned. So so uh, I'm glad that you could take some time here and, and join us on this Friday. Um, so so welcome back. Um Shoot, where did we leave off last time? Last time we left off, you didn't. Um, you, you, this book was in the works, but it's getting released now. Let's jump right into the book that uh, that's going to be coming out uh, very soon, called "The Haunted Southern Nevada Ghost Towns: Haunted America." Yes, yeah, it was uh, for um, haunted, yeah, haunted America. I was thinking History Press. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> oh yes, okay. Yeah. It, it's, but it is part of their haunted <laughs> America series. They have. Um, you'll find them in all the. You know, if you go to a museum. You'll see their books in the different museums, and I know local Walgreens and local Barnes and Nobles carry them as well. Uh, but basically, this one focuses on all the um, ghost towns, pretty much Tonopah and South in Nevada. So you have oh. Goldfield, Gold Point, Nelson. I even included Boulder City, even though it's not really considered a ghost town because it's still fully functioning. But they have an abandoned pet cemetery there that I wanted to make sure got featured in the book. Oh, look at you, a softie for your animals. I got, <laughs> I love that. Wow. Exactly. And it's just, it actually, this book idea came from, um, we did a documentary with Motion Picture Video out in Las Vegas. And we oh. were already going to the different ghost towns. So I had done all this research for the filming of the documentary. And I was like, why not try to turn it into a book? And I sent it to History Press and they loved it. Oh, how could they not? I mean, that's one thing. Of course, you've been on on the show, um, you know, paranormal shows for the, for all that Wild West stuff of ghost town. Because, of course, me being in, in New England and Maine, we get the witches and you get the pirates. You get all that lore, which is great. You get all the wars, all that stuff, Gettysburg. But no one really, really, we, we they do out west, but no one on this side really talks about the old Wild Wild West and the ghost towns, as you called it. Um, so that's cool. You're bringing that to life. Um, explain to everyone what a ghost town is for those that don't know. Well, essentially, a ghost town is, um, at least in Nevada, Arizona, and like the California area, it's a town that had once been a, a boom town, essentially, where it had um, the highest populations in the states, such as like Goldfield was also the state capital for a while. Wow. And then all of a sudden, when mining stopped, whether it was, there were several reasons why mining stopped, either money ran out, um, of course, you have the scammers even back then, yeah. um, yeah. They shut down a lot of the mines for World War One and again for World War Two, so they could focus manufacturing elsewhere. No and then resources just dried up, and wow. almost overnight, these towns lost ninety-five percent of their population. Wow! You see that a lot, like like of course with the 49ers, which is of course a football team, but that's the gold rush of of nineteen forty-nine, and they came and they boomed. Yeah, exactly. These towns, and then as soon as the resources are out, peace out. <laughs> There's no other reason to be there, and they become these abandoned towns. Wow, that's a great way to put it. Um, wh what what 
well, I don't get an hour, but I get so many questions for you because I haven't talked to you forever. You're such a busy girl. Um, <laughs> what really inspired you? Like, did you did you grow up? And did you see a movie about ghost towns? Were you just drawn to like these? You know what I mean? Like those shootout towns? Right. Well, living in just outside of Las Vegas, we were at any given time, we were within 30 minutes to an hour of a ghost town. We were only about three hours away from Goldfield, which is one of the most thought about ghost towns when you think of Nevada. And it was just something that we did as a family and explored. Wow. You know, because like cool. Nelson, uh, Nelson, Nevada, which was El Dorado Canyon mine, that was about a half hour south of us. And it um, essentially the town was bought by a couple from Boulder City. And they owned the entire town and they restored all the buildings and turned it into a place where you could go do photos, take tours of the mines and do all of that type of stuff. So that was kind of something we always were interested in doing. I think I know what you're talking about. Didn't they, aren't, didn't they, I saw a show on that on like Netflix or Hulu or something. And mm -hmm. there's like the kids are saying it's haunted there and shit like that. Right? Is that the same town I'm thinking of? A couple I think so. It. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, my mom, a long time ago, real side note, she, she went to California with my dad a long time ago. They drove cross country and they spent the night and she talked about it until her death. Not literally the same day, but every like every month or so she'd bring up Calico Ghost Town. Yep. In New Mexico, I think. Is that sound right? California. California. OK. Yep. And she spent the night there and I looked it up on Google and it looks quite amazing. It's your typical wild, wild west ghost town. But yeah, mm -hmm. that's pretty well. You must have been there, I imagine. No, that was one town I never got to. No and I wish I had when I still lived out there. Oh, uh, oh, uh, real quick in chat, Ross. Thank you, uh, King. There, my boss. What's up, Ross? Um, he says, "Didn't one town burn to the ground?" You know what he's talking about? Goldfield had three fires, three wow. fires and a flood. And um, in one of the fires, a majority—I can't remember the dates off the top of my head—but a majority of the main living area. Um, had burned down uh, minus a few buildings. And I don't know how it managed to survive all the fires, but you still have like the Goldfield Hotel remained untouched from all the fires. Wow. But a lot of the saloons, the newspapers, the banks, and all of that stuff were destroyed. Jeez, I'm, it took it. That's that's a town that God didn't want around. He just kept trying to burn it to the ground and it just wouldn't go. That's crazy. Some stuff remained too. That's pretty wild. I like that. Wow. So um, for those who don't know, we're talking to, to Heather Lee Landon, PhD. She is uh, with the Warren Legacy Foundation and on her own doing so much stuff. Um, let's talk about um, your, your vodcast, your your, uh, your show that you do. Um, how long have you been doing that again? I know I asked you last show, but for those that have, aren't, you know, have maybe didn't catch it. Um, right. You, yeah, you've been doing that for a while now, haven't you? A couple of years? Well, the Exploring the Paranormal I've only been doing since the first of the year. Okay. It was something I started because I was interested. I was thinking on turning it into a radio show, but then I realized I didn't have the time to do it. So I just kind of, I do it on every other Wednesday night from uh, seven to nine. I do that one. But Ghost Education 101 is the one that I've been doing with Philip Wyatt from Georgia Paranormal Investigations. That's right. We've been doing that one since COVID started. Wow. Very cool. Very cool. So yeah, you get your hand in a lot of pots. Um, on top, of course, being a mother and, 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 and everything else. But um, and of course, the Warren Legacy Foundation, you're a, a, a trivial part of, of that. Chris McKennell speaks so highly of you. I mean, of course, I'm kissing your butt because you're the one that got me in there. But, you know, I, you know, I love you. And you know, I mean that because I had, I, you know, it was cool having you on the show way back then with all the other all the, everybody else. But I, I thought there was so much more. Um, and I'm going to bounce all over the place. We're only 10 minutes in. But let's talk again about um, your paranormal group, uh, Exploration Paranormal, that you founded with with basically your son and, and, and husband, I guess, basically just you three, right? Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. Kind of started on a fluke because I was a part of a team, but as I continued through learning more, because I've been researching the paranormal field for more than thirty years, but I never really was part of an active team. I just kind of did my own thing, and when I joined a team, <coughs> I. Just, I, I, I wasn't liking the way it was run and nothing bad about how they ran it. That's just how they wanted to run their team. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's where you could say my OCD kicked in. <laughs> and the, uh, the team, I mean, the team's yeah. director had moved out of state and it just kind of wasn't the same as it was anymore. So several other members left at the same time and just before I did. And I just decided it was something I, I if I was going to do a team, I needed to do it on my own because yeah. 
I want things done a certain way. And this other team to me felt more like paranormal tourists. So I, it was, I but my husband, you know, of course I don't go investigate anywhere alone. So that's where my son came into play, but he wasn't 18 at the time. So my husband, I wouldn't take my son on residentials just for liability purposes. Yeah. So my yeah. husband would go on residentials. So we all kind of just created our own team that way. And the, our entire team was featured in Real Haunts Ghost Towns. Yes, it was. I watched that episode and you guys were in there. And uh, and uh, I remember you you brought up like your son's first time seeing the ghost. He even uh, he even <laughs> hates bringing it up still now. He gets embarrassed about it. <laughs> he does. So. I think it's because he was in the bathroom at the time it happened. <laughs> <laughs> Ghosts don't care where you are, man. What time, what it is, whatever. Like, yeah, that's pretty wild that he's. And that's awesome that it's a family thing. I think that really is the best. When you, like you said, you don't want to go solo anyway, but to have a team. It's, it's hard because you have a lot of people that butt heads, next thing you know, and you're definitely a leader by trait, whether you want to be or not. You're definitely, you're, the way you speak, you're very knowledgeable, you're definitely a leader, and I think that's that's the best way. If you, if you want something done right, you got to do it yourself, and that's what you chose to do. Yep. So I, I think it's yeah. phenomenal, you know? I get, I get yelled at by Chris about that a lot because I tend to take on more than I should, but yeah. again, that's the OCD, and if I want it done right, I got to do it myself. <laughs> yes, uh, Chris McKettle is Ed and Lorraine Warren's grandson, and he runs the Warren Legacy Foundation uh, uh, for paranormal research, everyone listening, and uh, and he's more or less our boss, I guess, so to speak. And uh, and he uh, he speaks very highly of Heather, but he's always like, she needs to just take a time off. She needs to take a breath. He's he's almost like that that almost like a father figure in a way. <laughs> it's so funny, um, but he's so loving, and you're so respected, and you know that. Um, but I want to talk about something a little bit more diverse than just the whole ghost hunting western stuff, and we can get back into it. But I want to talk about something that's really big that you have for a cap uh, in your hat or a feather in your hat, rather. Um, you studied paranormal science at the Institute for Meta uh, I can't never pronounce that right. Metaphysical <laughs> and yeah. humanistic science. Humanistic yep. science. Yes, that's like talk about that. That's really intriguing, yeah. deep stuff. Yeah, okay. IMHS is located here in Florida in the uh, Tampa Bay area, yep. and I uh, I knew Dr. Kelly long before I ever even signed up for the courses, and we were in Nevada, and it was kind of funny. I was sitting on the couch. It, I want to say it was like June or July of the summer before I really dove deep. So about four years ago, actually five years ago, before I really dove deep into the paranormal as much as I did. And I think, at, what show was it? It was UFO Hangar Declassified or something, one of those TV, the UFO shows. And I was oh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, you know, I, I think I could really do something with this. So I started looking up MUFON and was looking to become a member and taking all of their classes. And one of, in the search came up was IMHS, HS. And it said, you get your, you know, your degrees and your certifications and everything. They do everything from spiritual leadership to um, ordained ministry. They also own Thomas Francis University. They're accredited by the American Association of Psychics. And it, it's, Dr. Kelly's name came up and I'm like, that name sounds familiar. So I started looking into it more and I had an option of going into ufology. I could also have done cryptozoology, but I like, or parapsychology, but I like the idea of the paranormal science route that he had because I've always been scientific in mind and that's just the way I was raised. Mm -hmm. And it, it taught how to actually use the scientific method in the paranormal field. Wow. Which is really hard to do because we can't repeat our experiences. And that's right. that's why I took that route, because I really want to see this field use a universal standard method of investigation. That's, I mean, in a perfect world, but oh, that sounds hard. <laughs> but I mean, that sounds fantastic in theory. I think that could be your favorite Ghostbuster had to have been Egon. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> Yes, I love it. You're so well, an ego on it. And, and I know, thing. I know, not a lot of people like the reboot with all the females, but the blonde was my favorite from that one, and oh. she was a science science nerd. Yes, I'll screw them. I, people, oh, they shouldn't even have made it. It's like, well, don't watch it. I think that's great part of the. I you're love right. it. I love it with Thor being a secretary. It's such a great switch. I yep. mean, even the one with the kids, they're all great. You know, so that's, yes, she's great. She has, she, and she, all the gadgets, that's Heather out back tinkering. I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's cool. And I'm glad you did the UFO move on drop. We actually have UFO Fred Richards checking in. Hey, Fred, what's up? Um, see, he was dropping about UFOs here in chat. We got Melissa Keene in chat, uh, Carlos Nunez, Terry York. George Cannon, me and King, of course, and Winter, uh, we got Bog Winterborn, award-winning cryptid hunter. That's actually Jimmy Bentonino from Nesper. <laughs> 
he always checks in. But uh, that's cool, <laughs> UFO Fred. You were talking about UFOs and cryptozoology. We have them in chat. We actually have a, a question for you too, Heather from George Cannon. Um, well, he asked if you have any UFO encounters. No, I haven't. At, at least none that I know of. You know, because we lived where we lived, we were about two and a half hours from Area 51. So who knows what happened that we might not remember. That's right. That's right. Area 51's in Nevada, right? Or New Mexico. Or uh, shoot, that's right. Roswell, New Mexico. Yeah. yeah. And, and then there was a museum that I volunteered at a lot. And they actually allowed me to conduct paranormal investigations there to practice. And no. they have a train car from Area 51 that had the spirit of a little boy around it. Oh, God, Heather. That is, I, wow. I mean, that, are you kidding me? Yep. So if you ever make it out to Nevada, we're going to hopefully, I think next spring, I'm going to be hosting an event out there when I do my book tour. Well, first off, I'm going to get your book. I know it's coming out uh, pretty soon here in August, uh, right? August. What day in August? August 22nd. Okay, we're going to touch on your book in a second, too. But um, you know me. I'm going to support you. And and not, and I, I get no reason to kiss your butt. You're, you, you're knowledgeable. You bring a lot to the table. And you're very so sweet and so supportive. And uh, you've triumphed so much. And you're making waves for women in the field. Everybody thinks it's a guy field. No, man, there's a lot of girls running this stuff. Not that gender matters. But, um, yeah, I would love to go out to Nevada with you and listen to see what you get to say. Um Great. Uh, we got another question. Great questions, guys. Keep them coming. Uh, Carlos Nunez, he's been with us almost every show. Thanks, Carlos, for checking in. Uh, he says, Heather, what is the biggest mistake, that, in your opinion, that teams are making in the field? Not taking it serious enough. And in addition to that, not picking which side of the coin they want to do. And what I mean by that is... Yeah, you can, you know, investigate public locations and do the research, and you can also do home investigations to help the clients, but there's too many of these teams that prefer to do, I, I call it paranormal tourism, because mm -hmm. it's they're going out just to experience it. They're really not going out to collect data or to help anyone. And then they try to help someone, but they don't know what they're doing enough because they haven't dedicated their time to learning how to help clients. Yeah. 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 I agree with that. I agree with that. I mean, I mean, I myself am kind of like that to an extent, like I don't really, I don't pay to investigate, but like last night, uh, me and Heather went to Sleepy Hollow, New York, Terrytown actually, but, and we, uh, we checked out the sites, but I checked out Mark Twain's house on the way back. I checked out uh, Harriet Beecher Stowe's house on the way back in Connecticut. So I did a little historical tour, which is kind of my thing more than, I don't, I, I did that at first. I went to St. Albans. I paid money, did the weekend tour thing and ate the pizza. I went out and investigated and went out and had beers after. And it just, I was like, this just isn't, Everybody's taking selfies and high five and going on Twitter and all that shit. I'm just like, this is not really what I want to do. So I've kind of stayed away from that. And I think I made some enemies or at least I've lost friends. There's so many people I know that don't talk to me or like my shit like they used to. But I, I, I'm not trying to talk about me now. I know it's the show about you. But what I'm saying is like, that's why me and my girl Heather, as you know, we just do our own thing. Because mm -hmm. and I think that's what you and your family do. You just keep tight to those close to you. You do your own thing. And if you need people need to help us, you hit up the Warren Legacy Foundation. People have hit me up and I say, hit up the Legacy Foundation. And they message <laughs> you guys. Um, and that's what needs to be done because I can't go in. I'm not going to burn some sage and go, your house is clear. I'm not going to bullcrap my way out of it. I'm a researcher and historian. And that pretty much stops there. And that's why I look for the bigger fish like Chris McKennell and, and uh, you know, um, Plato, uh, Pl Father Plato, uh, Platicus from uh, Nespar, if I need help yep. or anything. Of course, you guys, obviously, you guys got my back because we're on the foundation together. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of people out there that just want to do the weekend warrior thing. They want to go and they want to go to P Penhurst Asylum or, or uh, Eastern State Penn and they want to spend the night and be like Zach Baggins, record and go home. But like you say, they kind of make it worse sometimes, right? They almost open up Pandora's box and then leave it for the next guy, right? They do. And we get a lot of calls. Um, we even, we have a case that we're working on right now where the client sent us photos at a previous team center. And when we did a search for the, you know, we searched for the team that helped her and we found not only the client's photos from their, her home, all over this team's Facebook page, oh. but also other investigations that they've done. And oh. the light anomalies that they said this client had was the exact same shape and position on other photos. It's a fucking shadow. They're, they're scaring the death out of these people and they're, you're and they're, breaking the privacy rule. Right, and they were faking the photos because it was like they were copying and pasting this light anomaly. Because oh. it was weird streaks. And the weird streaks showed up. It was either something on their camera or they were faking them. 
And that's what gives us feel the bad name. That's what brings yeah. the Zach Baggins say. And I'm not trying to knock on him. I just know the difference. Like there's the movie makers. There's the people that are like want to show and glow. And there's nothing wrong with TV appearances. I'm not knocking that. But there's the people that try to do things. And then there's ones that really just want answers. And that's where the Warren Legacy comes in. We're just in this for answers and, and stuff. We got another question for you, Heather. Mm -hmm. um, they're rolling in now. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, and thank you, Carlos, for the question. Melissa Keen wants to know, she says, hi, Heather, how are you? Uh, how important to you is EVP evidence in a case, uh, domestic or, or otherwise? Or not domestic, but like uh, home case or otherwise. Right. E EVPs are important um, because they're a way of communicating, but they have to be done right if you're going to use them, especially in if you want answers for a residential investigation. And to do that, you would have to do EVP burst where you ask three or four questions and then play them back right there. So that way you can see if you get any answers while you're there. Or get one of the, um, I can't remember the model numbers, but there are some higher end ones where you can put a pair of headphones on and listen live mm -hmm. to what's coming through the voice recorder. Yep. But if you don't, if you wait till you get home to review all the EVPs or the video footage or anything like that, you're gonna not be able to get the answers to the questions you asked or the additional questions that, you know, get answered. That's true. It's all in timing. It's all in, in figuring it out. And that's, that stuff's hard to prove. Cause you know, as everybody says, well, that don't mean nothing. Everybody's a, uh, that comes to your evidence. No one really wants to help on evidence. They all want to display everybody else's evidence. But then you look, you say you've got people that fake stuff and with technology, that's so easy to determine things. I don't fall for these YouTube yeah. videos, you know, yeah. <laughs> I told like when me and Heather did Lizzie Borden's, she did dowsing rods a little bit. I recorded, but honestly, Heather, we didn't, we don't have spirit boxes, none of that stuff. We sit there. <laughs> I use my ears and my eyes, even my sense of smell. Try yeah. to smell cigars, try to smell perfume. You know that you're old school too. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's what matters. And as far as provoking shit, man, when we go to places, me and Heather, we try to look and listen, but we don't go there going, come on out, show yourself. And then it's just, yeah, that, that's hard. It's hard. There is kind of two sides, almost three sides in this field to an extent. Mm -hmm. So that's tough. Um, so let's talk about books. Let's talk about this book. This obviously isn't your first book, right? This is my first book published, yes. Oh, shoot. Wow. Congratulations. That's amazing. I thought it was your second for some reason. No kidding. Awesome. No, I have several in the works that are, um, I have two contracts already signed again with the History Press wow. for next year. Wow, look at you go, yes. So let's talk about this one. Well, uh, we know what it's based on, um, but it's, it's coming out. People can pre-order, is that correct? Yeah, it's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, and then from what I've heard, you could go to your local bookstore if you don't have any of those or don't want to order it online and do that. Um, I know with my upcoming knee surgery, um, things on my end have been pushed back, but I will be getting some books in either late September, early October, and I'll be doing a live book signing on my Facebook page, Ooh. as well as I'll be at Phantasm here in Orlando with uh, Bill Slevin and Chris McKinnell will both be there. And Chris wrote the foreword. So if anyone wants to get a copy of the book signed by both Chris and myself at the same time, you'll have the opportunity to do it in August up in Orlando. And then we're gonna be in Virginia, Virginia Beach sometime in September doing an event. Ooh, that's closer to me. Oh my God. Both of you are going there and for yeah. every, oh, all three or whatever I should say. Well, Bill um, will be in Orlando, but Chris and I will be, cause we're, um, we also partner with Flumery Promotions, the same company that does Brandon Elvis's and Mustafa and all of those. Yep. And they're setting up an event with Chris being in the United States for the event in Orlando. Uh, um, there's, he's setting up an event. It's either going to be at a local high school or at the, I want to say Beacon Theater. Beacon Theater. Awesome. Awesome. We'll do some research on that, guys. You guys can follow Heather. She's on Facebook. Uh, you don't do Instagram, Heather? Oh, I couldn't see you on Instagram or nothing. Don't, I couldn't find you. No? No, I had an Instagram page, but I just never used it, and I might have had four people look at it a month. Maybe that's why it's, yeah, I couldn't find it. I typed you in it because so Instagram's I, I just kind of stupid, in my opinion. Even, yeah. even though I can post on Facebook and Instagram at the same time, I just didn't have time to monitor both. Yeah. So I, I just, I, all my, everyone laughs at me because all my social media publishing is done the first week of the month, and I just let it auto auto post for the rest of the month. No shit. Yeah. Well, you are, you are a, a wife, a mother, and an author, and uh, you, you run a big part of the foundation, and you work, obviously, or do whatever. So, I mean, you're obviously busy doing it, plus the show. 
So yeah, social media is not as easy as things. I mean, I it's so fucking hard to share all my radio show stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm a secretary, but no one wants to do it for free. Heather kind of does, though. So I shouldn't say that. <laughs> oh, Heather checks in. Which life guide? Heather says hello. Heather uh, Caminiti. Yeah, um, Heather says, ask your local libraries to carry the book. That's true. Give them a shout out. Maybe they'll get the book. I know there's a lot of libraries are getting more into like spiritual and paranormal stuff, which is kind of neat. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because I know on the History Press, then they're focused on just promoting it in the Southern Nevada area because that's what they do with their books. But oh. I know um, Barnes and Noble here in Florida, since we just moved here, they're going to promote it as a local author signing. So they're actually going to carry the books down here. Oh, that's amazing! Supporting a local artist—that's very cool. That's very cool. I might have to go check out in Virginia. That's a lot closer to me. I'll go check out the Mothman in West Virginia after or something. But I'd hopefully, love to meet you. Hopefully, we'll have dates soon. We're just waiting for the uh, venues to confirm. Yeah, please. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely keep me posted. I'm sure you'll be sharing stuff. I'll check it out. And you are pretty quiet on Facebook. I shared a couple of your book stuff on my my historically haunted group page and and on the historically haunted show Facebook page. I shared your book and stuff, but. Uh, yeah, I think your last post is like May or something. Yeah, <laughs> uh, on my personal page, yeah, but my actual business page, I at least try to post or schedule something to post there daily. Oh, that's true. That's true. That's right. Yeah. So that's on there too. Um, anything on YouTube or anything like Twitter? You don't do know that. I do have YouTube. Okay, where can um, people find that? There's like four four videos or five videos on it because I need to update it because I um. I think if you search my name, because I don't have enough followers yet to have a uh, my own, you know, the branded name. Yeah. But you can find me. I think I have it as Heather Lee PhD or Heather Lee Landon PhD. Uh, yeah, Heather Lee Landon PhD. And the only things that I really have up there right now are just um, some replays of my podcast or the vodcast. Okay. Including my interview with Brandon Alvis, um, Muhammad Ibrahim. We did a video on ancient Egyptian beliefs. He's actually an archaeologist Ooh. and an Egyptian tour guide. Oh, I love that. So we did a quick, it was only 30 minutes because he was in the middle of a tour in, in Egypt. Oh, my God. So he got on and he gave me some time to be able to do it. And then my non-tech tool presentation for paranormal research is up there as well. Okay, that's amazing. Wow, Egypt. I'm I'm still shocked on that. It's like literally, oh, I was gonna say it's one of my bucket lists. Let's go off. Let's have a little fun here. Let's, it's 8 30, so we got about a half hour left, 8 27. Um, I want to break off now and get to the so the, to the the fun part of uh Heather Lee PhD. I like that. It's actually kind of a catchy <laughs> handle, but um let's talk about your bucket list, Heather. I know I asked you before, but um let's talk about a place that you uh, in America. You know, or, or North America rather, and, and anywhere in the world. So give me two bucket list places, at least two, if you could. Um, for me, it would be a lot of my family's background is ir- Irish. So I would love to do, uh, this is partially also my dad's dream, and I just think it would be hysterical, is to rent a bike and ride the bike pub to pub testing out the different beers and also investigating as you go from pub to pub. Oh my God, Heather. <laughs> yes. What do you think you'd make? Six pubs, 10 pubs, 15, eight, what? <laughs> I have no clue. I, I'm a lightweight. <laughs> Especially a beer over there is not regulated. So you can get like a pint that's like 20% and be like a fucking shot, like a bottle of wine in a bottle. I mean, wow. Castles and shit. I can see you roaming the castles and stuff too. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty cool. And then my other place would be the Sydney Opera House in Australia. Oh, my God. I had um, Amanda from uh, Haunted Old and Beautiful there on, on Facebook. And not her, but her husband, um, William. Um, he's an Australian paranormal team out there. And he says that's one of his places that he goes to. And I was like, he says it's crazy haunted. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, between, like, sea type eight, like pirates type scavenger animals to, to like natives out there to everything in between. It's, it's very much uh, alive. He said, or spirited as they put it. Um, that's a great one. What about America? Give me an American one. You've been, you've been to Maine. You've been to my, my state. No, I haven't been to Maine, but I'm trying to think. Well, Gettysburg, Gettysburg. I've been to Gettysburg. Yeah. Dun- Williamsburg. Uh, oh, yeah. Trying to think. I guess if I had to pick something in the United States, it would be the Alamo. 
you ain't been in the Elmo, and you, you were kind of, wow, you've covered a lot of that land out there, but <laughs> no shit. That's all you yeah. on it got banned. Yeah. The Alamo, that's, uh, boy, Texas, huh? Texas is mm-hmm. loaded with stuff, and that's that's right up there for, for a lot of history, Mexican history, American history, presidential history. Pee Wee Herman lost his bike there. Remember that in the movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that and probably Tombstone. Tombstone, Arizona. I, I never made it to out. Tombstone. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Excuse me, so you're a West Coast girl by heart. I mean, you really are. You really love the Southern West uh, gunshot stuff. You must love, like, Billy the Kid. And, yes. Like, yeah. You love yeah it's, like it's weird, though, because I was born in Virginia and grew up just outside of Chicago and then That's... moved to Florida after college. Wow. So I And I think it's mostly because I, I've exhausted the East Coast. Sounds like it. Yeah. And even though I love going to Gettysburg and I could go there over and over and over, my thing is, is life is short. If you have the opportunity to go somewhere else, you know, take it. Amen. Oh, no, amen. Do, do you, speaking from, a, you know, obviously this is what my, I guess what the listening would want to hear. And it, obviously if it's not, that's fine. But do you feel spiritually drawn? <laughs> do you feel like maybe you're reincarnated or something draws you to this West? Or is it just? See, I feel more spiritually drawn to Gettysburg. God, I love Gettysburg. I've been to Harrisburg, Gettysburg. I've been three mm-hmm. times, and oh boy, I don't know. If it's the, it's not the water. It's not. It's it's the scenery. It's the lore. It's it's. I hear gunshots, mm-hmm. the statues, and cannons. And oh man, I'm still in the spotlight from you. But yeah, no, Gettysburg. Oh no, go well, ahead. I, What's your Gettysburg favorite? was where I saw my first full-bodied apparition that I thought was human. You told me that. Yes, yes. Where was that? That's right. It was at uh, Devil's Den. Devil's fucking Den, the rock foundation. With the yep. snakes. The Native, the Native Americans called it Devil's Den because there was black snakes around there. But mm-hmm. that's where the Union soldiers went. Um, it was like a makeshift hospital, right? Or a shelter, I think? No, it was actually a sniper's, uh, a sniper area. Wow. It's right in front of Little Round Top, too. Not, it's all yes. Off. Yeah. Wow. So let's talk about that, Heather. What, what, uh, play the picture for me. Oh. Well, I was still in college and I was uh, majoring in photography back then. So I was kind of just going around, you know, taking photos and playing around with the different settings on the camera so I could get to know it better because it was a new camera at the time. And I come out from in between, like in, I was like coming out from like what would be inside the rocks, I guess you would call it. And I came face to face with a young gentleman, full Confederate gear. Didn't think anything of it because they were having a reenactment that weekend. And he walked by me, tipped his hat, and just kept going. And I was like, I can't let this guy go without a photo. You know, I'm sitting here thinking I'm a photographer. I need to get his photo. Yeah, and yeah. I chased, chased after him, and I would have seen him either running away or walking away. There was nowhere for him to go the way he walked. It was completely open, and he was gone. So, wait, so what do you mean? You, you, what do you, mean? you came out, and he was just poof? You, you didn't see him walking or running? You just gone? Yep, he was gone, you know, because I turned, he walked past me and I turned around thinking, oh my goodness, I need to get his photo. And he was nowhere to be found. Dude, I wish you guys could see my freaking arms right now. I got goosebumps. <laughs> uh, I've been to Devil's uh, Den and then around Devil's Shirt, sure, Devil's Den is a rock. It's a big, big rock nest, mm-hmm. but literally for about a mile in any direction around it is pretty flat. <laughs> yep. Someone's not going to be hidden. It's pretty flat. And if you were to go top of the rocks, you're going to have to really hike up there quick. You would have seen scuffling rocks. Oh, yeah. Wow. I, I don't remember something because he was like almost walking away from the rocks. So he would, didn't duck back in. And I searched the whole area because I was like, where'd he go? <laughs> you oh, know? dude. And if you're wearing gear like that, that's thick and heavy. You're not exactly hoofing it. That's heavy wool they wore back then it wasn't exactly uh <laughs> you know what i mean light uh, material like the soldiers have now oh wow you got, I got goosebumps hard <laughs> yeah that's crazy gettysburg's a trip um how many times you've been heather probably about a handful wow because yeah, my it's i don't like to use the word fan but that's the only word i can use to describe it when it comes to the civil war my family was big big into researching it you know, like I said, I, my dad was in the Navy, so I was born um, in Portsmouth, and Virginia Beach is where we lived. And, Portsmouth, uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire? No, Virginia. Oh, Virginia's going to Portsmouth. I didn't know that. Yeah, Portsmouth, okay. Virginia. Yeah, oh, okay. and um, okay. so we've, you know, we did all the, uh, of course, you have the, uh, what was it, Savannah, Charleston, Williamsburg, 
you know, all of those areas was just, that was our summer vacation. We would pack up the car, drive down to Florida where we had family and just drive up the East Coast all the way to New York, stopping at different places along the way, stayed with family in New York and then went home. Wow. Wow, that's a trip. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, um, Jenny Wayne House, the poor girl got shot uh, the bullet hole still in the door. She got shot making bread for a Union soldier. Uh, Gettysburg, Sachs Bridge. I mean, who boy? Yeah, what a trip. Um, wow, I got lost in the moment there. Because especially <laughs> being the, I love my ghost. Obviously, I love it. You know that. But I love my love, love, love exploring in history as as you do. I mean, that's basically what you are. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you, it doesn't get it doesn't get better in American soil anyway, in US, USA soil than Gettysburg. Salem's great. New Orleans is great. I went to Sleepy Hollow yesterday. That was am- amazing. Sleepy Hollow, Terrytown, actually. But there's nothing like Gettysburg, man. Wow. That's cool. That's cool. Sorry, I got lost in the moment. Um, so thank you guys for checking in. Um, keep the questions coming. Keep them going. We're talking to, to uh, Heather uh, Lee Landon, PhD, Warren Legacy Foundation member, podcast host, author, um, explorer, a paranormal investigator. Um, Heather, do you use, uh, obviously, you, you, you know, you trust yourself and you know what you're doing, but um, do you dabble in crystals and sage and all that boogity boogity little holy water? Do you do that stuff? Do you bring it with you? It's all over my house. <laughs> Nice. I do too. I got sage burning right now. Actually, I don't know if you can smell it, but yeah, yeah. No, it's when we moved. The last things to leave the apartment in Vegas were my crystals that I had to protect the home. And then <laughs> while we were en route, I charged them in the sun in the back of the car. <laughs> my God, every Heather I know is the same. You're yeah, like and, and then Heather. they were the first thing in the house before we moved our stuff in. Oh, bless your heart. And, you know, that's, that's, oh, my God, I love that. Uh, speaking of Heather's, my girl Heather, Witch and Life guy checks in. She goes, hello, Heather, much love. Um, a little off topic, but she wants to get to know you better. What is your favorite holiday uh, slash yearly event? <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> oh, shit. A girl after our hearts, Heather, you hear that? Halloween. I, I decorate more for Halloween than I do for Christmas. You guys, you decorate all year round. You got Halloween in your house right now, I bet. You got a skull somewhere, I bet. I, I do. I actually just got done. I'm, I've started the, started a new craft that I'm doing. I'll have to send you a photo. But it's a wine bottle with a sugar skull on it, and then it lights up. Oh, shut the front door. <laughs> I want one. I want to meet you in person. I want you, I want a selfie with you, and I want your autograph, especially with Chris. That'd be dope. I met Chris once. Mm-hmm. I actually picked him up at Ed and Lorraine's house, and we had breakfast in Monroe, Connecticut, before he left back in 2019, right as my mom died. Mm-hmm. And that's when I got involved in this. I started talking. Of course, I met all you wonderful people in the Warren Legacy Foundation that are like family now. And uh, yeah, so you're going to be doing a little tour then. We're I hoping. Mean, really? yeah, yeah, and it, it all depends on how fast I recover from my knee. If not, I know Chris <laughs> will be doing the few events. And then, because I was supposed to be going to Nevada for my book tour for October, but my doctor won't let me fly until after the first of the year. It's her second so, knee surgery, guys. It's her second yeah. knee surgery. She's a hardcore <laughs> tennis player. She don't mess around. And it's, in all seriousness, in this, I mean, this is your legs we're talking about. This isn't mm-hmm. just like, you know, I mean, you got to be careful, Heather. You know that. But you're like Chris McKinnell yeah. says, you're one to push the envelope, but yeah. you got to slow down. you got to slow down. But it's at the same like, time, when, ah. we, when we were recording Real Hans Ghost Towns, <laughs> <laughs> when we were climbing out of the mine, I was like, oh, my. that made me realize I had to get knee surgery. <laughs> I remember that part. I remember. Yes. Oh, you, you were in pain that time. I would say, oh, yeah. I had to, you had to crawl right through it. And you get dust all over you. Dirt, the spiders. The, I, I what was it exactly uh, a me. clean set, so to speak? <laughs> <laughs> What's your best memory of, of filming? What's like your biggest, like, this is really happening to me, memory? I want to say we were at the Goldfield Cemetery, which didn't make it into that one. That investigation, I think, is going to be in Real Hunts 3, which comes out this fall. But we were investigating the gold, uh, the Goldfield Cemetery, and there was a Confederate soldier's uh, grave. And my son took the reins because he wanted to know more about that soldier and just conducted a full-blown investigation Good at this man. guy's tombstone. Good kid. Look at that. And, you raised him right. Yeah, and we didn't, you know, of course... He wasn't haunting there, but we kept getting a female voice who kept wanting to try to talk. I love that. See, and you're one to say he's not haunting there. Not Mm -hmm. everybody is haunting the earth. Not everybody. Some people have moved on. Purgatory, hell, heaven, sanctuary, whatever you want to call it. 
per, uh, Shangri-La. They're not on Earth. Not everyone's a demon. Not everyone haunts the Earth, Heather. You know that. You're very much into the logic and the science of things. Right. So and, and my cool. thing is, is why would you haunt your grave site? Yeah, I mean, I could see a loved one possibly checking out a grave site now and then because they were comforted there because they'd come to visit your grave. Yeah. But I can't see the person who's actually buried there haunting the location. Right. I, I, I think a grave, a cemetery, graveyard, any of that would be just too uh, a depressing place to haunt if you're going to stay for the rest of your life, for yeah. eternity. If anything, it is a spookster. If anything, if it is a ghost, it's probably something that's messing with you because no mm -hmm. one has fond memories. I, I love graveyards personally. I love to go sit there and hang out. But no one is like, oh, yeah, like when I die, like, no, people want to, they haunt their homes, they haunt their loved ones, they haunt their favorite car or their favorite office or their favorite football team or whatever. They haunt what they love. I mean, it's, so, yeah, it's very, very, very rare. Um, questions are coming in again. Um, oh, I'm not going to ask her that, King. Oh, shit. Can you see the chat, Heather? Oh, I'm going to ask you it. No. Anything goes. Heather, <laughs> my my boss Ross goes. King, uh, paranormal King goes. Is Heather a witch? <laughs> I, I consider myself uh, Wiccan or not Wiccan, but pagan. Son I, of a bitch, you're right. You, yeah. I, I call myself um, a kitchen witch and also a green witch. Uh, I couldn't find after leaving the Roman Catholic Church. I couldn't find any one particular pathway that fit me. So I just kind of did a whole bunch of studying, a whole bunch of researching, and pick. I picked and chose what worked for me, and kind of almost created my own religion. <laughs> no, that's actually that's that's. I can see that as a as a shirt, kitchen witching or something. Yeah, and, uh, and that's cool because I think witch gets a bad name. You're not riding on a broomstick with a green wart in your fucking nose. Witch is. I, very I wish much I was riding on a broomstick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just wait. Who knows technology? Um, but yeah, seriously, like I love Salem. By, by the way, we went to Salem the other day. I mean, it's Witch City. Of course, it's the whole you know commercialized. But how can you not get a Witch Coffee, Witch Brew, or mm -hmm. something? Um, but that's cool because it comes from a lot of it. Is the herbalist? Is the garden? Is the healing? Mm -hmm. um, and Bog uh, Winterborn says maybe in big words the recognition of visitors to the grave site would bring the ghost there. That's a possibility, Bog. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a that's a good answer. It's possible that if you go there enough, I mean. I don't know all the people that visit great. I mean, every time I go to a graveyard, honestly, I'm like the only one there and I'm not visiting anybody personally. I'm just kind of checking it out because I love New England's got the old markings, old skull and crossbones and weeping willows and shit on graves is really cool. Um, oh, Melissa Keene, how great. Another great question. Uh, she wants to know where people can watch your TV show. You guys on Peacock or, or Netflix? Um, it's on, I'm trying to remember. They've been adding new places. It's. I know it's on Tubi. And TBI, I believe yep. I believe they just added uh, Roku, the Roku channel to it. Okay, you guys know. You guys don't need me to spell that shit. You guys are all in tune with the stuff. Is there a hard copy of that? You guys don't have a DVD or anything out yet, series? No, I've been asking, but they haven't made one yet. Because my parents want a copy. <laughs> yeah, I will say we're old school. We want the hard. I'm the same way. If I get a CD or even a book, I don't want to buy it on Amazon and read it. Which I want to want the hard copy and I want it signed because I'm a, such a fanboy. You know that. He's been mm -hmm. taking selfies with everybody and their brother. I yeah, love I, it though. I keep I keep pushing for it because I'm, I know I could sell it when I do the different events that I have coming up. Oh, Heather, absolutely. I need to have a copy of something of your sign. And I need a selfie because that's – if dude, after dying in that car accident last year for 36 seconds, my mom and everything, I want pictures. In case I have Alzheimer's one day, I want to look back and go, oh, I met Michael Myers, the guy that played Michael Myers. Oh, I met Rob Zombie. Oh, I met Heather Landon, PhD. Oh, I met Chris McKennell. <laughs> oh, I met Tony Sparrow. So that's cool. And I like that stuff. And I know you're very humble with that stuff. But that's what I definitely want is a picture uh, of you. And then someone asked what your favorite TV show is in general besides your own show that you've been on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Big Bang Theory. Oh, you are a nerd. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Let me guess Sheldon, right? Got to be your fave. Yeah. It, it, but that show kind of reminds me, even though they're all in different apartments in that show, it reminds me of when I went to college – I lived in a house, and the way they had done the house, it was an older house, which I wish I would, was investigating the paranormal as much as I am now back then, because I bet that place had a lot of things going on. Oh. She divided it up to where all the rooms, we had our own locks, but of course we shared a kitchen and we shared um, a bathroom. I, I was the only female in that house, and oh. it reminded me so much of back then, because of course, you know, we played Magic the Gathering. We... <laughs> 
<laughs> we would go um, LARPing. Oh, the, the yes, like the gladiators fight, but like that's what Gore right. though. That's my favorite band, Gore. G W A R. They dress in LARPing shit and they go on stage yep. and they cut heads off. I love that, Heather. You're such a kid at heart. Sorry, go ahead, keep going. <laughs> Oh, and yeah, it just the show reminded me so much of what my college years were like, because that that's basically what it was. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Yeah, you know, there every character in that show fit someone who lived in the house that I lived in. Even Penny, huh? Well, I a lot of people say I was more Penny, but uh, I was a nerdy Penny. No, 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 that Penny's pretty hot. Heaven knows that. I mean, my girl Heaven knows that. Um, so there's nothing wrong with that. It could be worse. I like David, the dude from Roseanne, because I just associate with him because I knew him from mm -hmm. Roseanne. But his name's yep. not really David, but yeah, they got the curly hair. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. So, yes, King or, or was it UFO Fred? Let me see real quick. The chat moves when someone talks. I got to scroll up. Someone asked if you were still. Uh, oh, crap. Um, bear with me, guys. Uh, are you still on any more episodes of the Hostage to the Devil? Is that you were on that? No, that's maybe not me. All right, maybe it's talking something. Maybe it's something else then. Maybe guys, there's another Heather guys, but another another question uh, from my girl Heather, uh, Witch in Life Guide. Her show's coming back, guys, next Wednesday too. I'm sure she'd love to have Heather on as a guest. I'm gonna go ahead and set that up. Uh, my girl Heather's gonna have her show on on Paranormal King Wednesdays from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern. So I'm sure she'd probably reach out to you eventually, uh, Heather Heather Lee, and have you on her show. But she asked you a question: Is it possible to have a soul slash spirit to be earthbound? But haunt in parentheses uh, multiple places and or people. Uh, yeah, yeah, because we're not even in uh, the afterlife. We're not tied to any one thing, and it's the whole concept of free will. So we don't. We're not told. You know, unless of course you have the curses. Unless you're cursed to be roam one specific area, we we technically do have free will to go anywhere and any time. It's true. Which That's is why true. when we're dead, it's the best time to go travel. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you got me on that one. List. I was just thinking a sip of my beer, and you got me on that one. <laughs> Shout out to Clown Shoes Beer, because it's pretty good, uh, birth, uh, Space Cake. But uh, Heather got me choking up on that one, because it's true. Think about it now. Like I just went to New York, and I must have, I mean, I had to rent a car, rent a hotel, a dog-friendly hotel, pay about 30 bucks in tolls, 95 bucks in gas. Um, and then I hurt my back walking up the cemetery. I felt like a 95-year-old man because I fell in front of Washington Irving's grave, probably my favorite poet before Stephen King. I fell right in front of his grave like an idiot. Maybe he pushed me. But, yeah, when you're a ghost, you're not going to have pain, supposedly. So I'm looking forward to that. I know you are, right? Heather, no knee surgery when you're dead, right? I know, exactly. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Um, what's one of your go-tos? It sounds like you love Gettysburg. I mean, you're all over the place. Um, I'm going to ask a question. Have you been to New Orleans and or Salem, like the voodoo witch places? No. Nope. No kidding. Any interest? Yes. Yeah, I just haven't made it there yet. If you come to Salem, I would love to show you um, the exact spot on Proctor's Ledge where the witches were, or the men and the women were hung. It's right in back of a Walgreens. It's not marked. There's no T-shirts, no magnets. It's actually just a little wooded area, but scientists have dubbed it. There's a little placard actually now as of five years ago. Um, but it's not top of the hill. If people think it's right in the bottom and I, I could bring you to um, some great Rebecca nurse homestead in Danvers, Massachusetts. It's right by Salem. It used to be Salem village before it was Danvers and uh, she's buried out back. And another witch, uh, Glenn Jacobs is out there. So I'd love to show you around. I know if you go, you'll have family and you probably wouldn't want extra people, but if you could find time to sneak a, a crazy kid in, I'd love to give you the tour <laughs> and, and get some, some pictures and shit. Um, so, yeah, so what else is new? What's up? Uh, I mean, obviously health, and you're kind of nervous about your surgery, but uh, anything else going on? This this year's kind of lightening it up with the, with the whole corona. You've been getting out and doing anything? Or? Yeah, we've um, explored uh, Madeira Beach, which is Treasure Island in Johns Pass, and that is a haunted fishing village just uh, north of Tampa. And I love going there and exploring there. That, actually, that was a place that we would go to a lot before I left. Um, I was hoping to get out to Casa Dega, which is a spiritualist camp here in Florida, but that'll probably have to wait until after my knee surgery. But other than that, we've just been, yeah, I've been researching because my next book is Florida Lighthouses, Haunted Florida Lighthouses. Augustine, Augustine, Augustine. <laughs> and I'm working with Flumery right now to work on a couple events 
as well as events for the Warren Legacy Foundation with them. And then they're also helping me set up my book tour in Nevada and um, a couple other events. I'm not sure who it'll be with, but I think um, I know one event that we're trying to book next year is with myself and Daryl from Ghost uh, Ghost Hunters. Daryl Marston. Yeah, I'm friends with Daryl. Um, I love to do, I, I honestly, because I know Chris Sanders and I know he's doing the Sleepy Hollow Con, but I think he's giving up Maine. I know there's one in, in Vassalboro, but I'd love to do it with Hampshire Paracon or something. I mean, not to be like the celebrity side of it, but just to bring people around, meet people, and to bring people. New Hampshire has got some great places like uh, the Stone America's Stonehenge in Salem, New Hampshire. I've been, mm-hmm. and uh, it lines right up with the Stonehenge in, in uh, London, and it's it's got an Oracle Cave and it's got uh, a sacrifice slab and shit. And I'd love to bring you there and do some cool stuff there and. Uh, yeah, I want to get in touch with with, uh, with all you guys, with Paraflix and all that stuff. You guys are doing some great stuff, and you're you're bringing to life stuff that really matters and hitting the hard uh, hitting stuff because you bring a lot of history. You you're very much in love with history, correct? Yes, yeah, that that's always been my favorite part. And I I do know I want to say it's end of October. Um, Frankie Frank from the foundation. Yes, I'm from is Frank. Yep. doing the um, Plattsburgh Dark Waters Paracon up in Plattsburgh, New York. Ooh, boy, Plattsburgh, that's, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, by Rolling Hills Asylum and stuff, almost like, that's kind of up there, yeah. Yeah, I know I'm supposed to be going uh, as long as I can make the drive. What are we looking at for a recovery of knee? We talking three, four months, though? Roughly, I mean, yeah, I know with my last knee, I was bedridden for about a month to a month and a half yeah. outside of the physical therapy, and then I still used a cane for another two months. Damn. And I was still a little slow for a few months after that. It wasn't until, I mean, I was still having trouble after we moved, and that was in September, and the surgery was in March. So it really wasn't until the end of last year where I started feeling 100% myself. Yeah, yeah. And, and now we're talking, by the time you're getting done to it, about a half a month into it, you're going to be in the middle of summer. It's going to be being beginning to middle of September when the heat really is still kind of lingering. So mm-hmm. a lot of prayers and thoughts coming your way. And there's no such thing as a basic surgery. And uh, I think a lot of people out there are going to want, you know, have your back and not that, I mean, I guess it doesn't really mean shit, but if you need anything, we're here for you, you know that. Cause uh, oh, yeah. thank you. you. Know I mean? Yeah, absolutely. You mean so much to a lot of people. I know you're, you're busy. Um, let's see. UFO Fred Richards says Plattsburgh has some decent history. I've never heard of, is it Plattsburgh was Pennsylvania you said, or, or New York, right? New York. I, I, I feel like I've heard of it, but that's what ring, it was. What what uh, can you ring my bell on this a little bit? Like what's what's it known for? Is it revolution, Abernathy Indians, UFOs? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah, no, it's Plattsburgh. Okay. Um, just a small town. <laughs> I really don't know how to describe it because I've never been there. Oh, okay, no shit. I don't know if you I've never but yeah, it's yeah. where Frankie and uh, Nate live. Hmm. And the, he said it's something like one of the a location where there was a revolutionary war battle that took place up there. Ooh, now we're talking. Okay. New York was a battleground. Uh, Fred says they breed goats that spin silk in Plattsburgh. What? That can't <laughs> be right. Is he, are you fucking pulling my chain, Fred? Don't mess with me. I'm trying to be a serious show talker here. I'm trying to be serial. Um, so we're talking to Heather Lee Land and L-A-N-D-O-N, uh, right? Yes. Okay. And, and she's an author, PhD also, but she's also an author. Um, she's so many things, a mother, uh, a, you know, a wife and just a, a leader, paranormal investigative leader of paranormal exploration. Um, so many things that you do, TV show, vod, uh, podcast, um, exploring the paranormal vodcast, which I've never been on. I'd love to be a guest anytime. I'm going to shoot that right now since we're recording. <laughs> I'm working <laughs> on my season two list, so. No way, really? I'm just I'll kidding, but totally. To Oh, I, you know me, I'm very, I've never said no to a vodcast because I just love talking to people. Um, mm-hmm. And I love finding out because uh, you know, you're know you from Illinois. Like you say, you're from Chicago, almost by Chicago. I'm a big, big, big Chicago Bears fan. I even got a big seat tattooed. I got a big helmet and flag. I met Brian Erlacher and I cried for a week when Walter Payton died. Um, you dig sports at all? You dig baseball or anything or no? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm a big basketball fan and no my shit. favorite team's the Raptors. Toronto Raptors? The, yeah, the, ever, ever, I thought their logo was the cutest little thing when they started, so I've been fans of theirs. Ever the since. little purple dinosaur, or it's the purple <laughs> background, right, with a red T-Rex or something, red Raptor, I forget the logo. Exactly. Oh, you guys had some good people through the years. I never, never would have guessed that. 
Um, what else uh, besides? So you're a big Raptors fan, so that's cool. And then, yeah, then the Chicago Bears. Yay! Uh, Florida Panthers. Yes, okay. And then the Chicago White Sox. Oh, my God. That's my team. I love Bo Jackson, Robin Ventura, Frank Thomas, and... Oh, that's so cool, Heather. I'm so glad I asked. No shit. You've ever been in any live games of any of those teams? Raptors or anything? Um, Not the Raptors, but the Bears a couple times. Um, the oh. Sox, yeah, definitely a couple times. You've been a Soldier Field? Yes. You know that's haunted, right? Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. And, of course, they played at Wrigley. You've been to Wrigley? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's where, oh, Gil Sayers played there. They say that's haunted, the Ivory and stuff. And, oh, man, Heather. Shit, you I wish you were going to go earlier. anywhere in Chicago and it not be haunted. <laughs> oh, that's true. I mean, you look at the St. Valentine's Day Massacre and you look at – Frank Sinatra sang about it. What's one of your favorite haunts in Chicago? Um, well, I, I lived about, it was two hours outside of the city. We were in Woodstock, Illinois. Oh, and okay. there's, if you've seen the movie Groundhog Day, when he's yes. in that center square, because that was filmed in Woodstock, there's a big three-story building that looks like it has a bell tower and it's all brick. That is the uh, former opera house. And it's actually one of, it's a lot of, Newspapers and radio stations and all of that call it the most haunted location in Illinois. In Illinois, I was just—I thought you were going to say the town or the county, but yeah, no, in Illinois, and it's—it's it's just I volunteered there in high school, and it's just—it's an amazing place. Volunteered doing what? Um, ticket sales and all of that stuff whenever they because it was an actual functioning opera house when I was in high school. Well, I was going to say it was actually open. Yeah, and I'm showing my age now. No. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were a vampire at first. You know, you're all good. Um, that's that's what brings the wisdom. I'm gonna crack open another beer here. Um, happy Friday, everybody! By the way, here in the middle of summer, happy, happy Fourth of July. I know we had Fourth of July off. We got about five minutes left, Heather. If you don't mind, if you don't mind, I'd love to go a little bit over. Ross gives me at least an hour. We don't have to go that long, but I'd love to go a couple minutes over because uh, people are starting to jump in the chat more mm -hmm. now. <clears throat> Excuse me, King actually asks. Uh, pardon me for coughing, by the way, guys. I have a I don't have Corona. I just have a little bit of a hiccup here. King asks, uh, Heather, what piece of ghost hunting equipment uh, do you prefer? And do you, uh, and what is the one that you find most underrated? The pendulum and, wow. and a fidget spinner. Fucking pendulum. You never hear that. That You are a witch. Men, talk about the pendulum for those old, new newbies that don't know what that is. Please. Yeah, the best way to use a pendulum on an investigation is to have a stand. So you're not um, interfering with it. Yes. Because, you know, when you're doing self, you know, witch work and all that stuff, yeah, you want to be touching it because that's all part of the hands-on aspect of it. But when you're doing an investigation, you want the spirits to be touching it and you don't want any contamination. So if you can come up with some type of stand, I know Etsy has a whole bunch. And then I have these little round pendulum boards that are set up similar to Ouija boards that have the yes, no, maybe, and all the alphabet. Yeah. And you just, you know, demonstrate how to use it and just start talking and get them to use it. Some, I mean, you can even do something as simple as, you know, swing it, you know, I'm looking at it, swing it to my left and right for no or spin it in a circle for yes oh, and do things like that. I love that. I love that and dowsing rods and, and mm -hmm. all the old school Oracle stuff. And what did you say the other one was? I'm sorry. I couldn't catch it. A, a fidget the... spinner. Fidget spinner? Do tell. That's I've never. That's <laughs> yeah, I was, um, I was hosting an event. For, uh, it was just before we moved and one of the guests at the event she came up to me and she's you know I was I kind of was off doing my own thing and letting the guests do their own investigations as they went and I was sitting off in a corner it was at the mine museum that I used to volunteer at and it was next to an old body elevator or a shaft elevator thing body that they had on display and I'm just just sitting there listening enjoying enjoying the you know, the location and watching everybody enjoy themselves. And she comes up to me. She's like, hey, Heather, can I show you something? And I was like, sure. So she gets this flat rock, sets it down, pulls a fidget spinner out of her pocket and sets it on the thing. And she's like making sure it fits. And she told the spirits, you know, hey, if you're here, can you move the fidget spinner? And she showed him how to move it. And a few seconds later, it slowly started moving. Ugh. I was like, that is the best thing ever. I've used it ever since. I even have six different ones that light up so you could have lights out and you can still see if your fidget spinners spin oh that is wicked cool 
that's pretty cool. And wicked cheap when you think about it compared to $300, $500 boxes, right? <laughs> yeah, my light up ones, I got all six for $10. Damn, that's fucking brilliant. Wow, I like that. I'm going to have to try I'm going to have to steal that and call it the Heather or something. I, I'm actually thinking on getting branded ones with my logo. <laughs> <laughs> and hitting them out of the awesome. best. Do it. You got to do it. Um, uh, <laughs> let's see. We got to see. Come, everybody in the chat's kind of fucking around. Someone shared a good picture of Ed Warren holding the Ghostbusters shirt. That's cool. Um, let's see. Do you, uh, okay, so I think it's for it, it could be Jimmy, but who knows? The idol of satanic worship <laughs> says, Hey, Heather, do you collect any haunted items from places? The idol wants to know. <laughs> Thanks, idol. I don't have any that I've collected from a location, but I do have a doll that I know my grandfather is attached to. Ooh. Meaning, like, what do you mean? I'm. Well, I'm assuming he's attached to it because I used to see him as a child or as a teenager, and we had the dolls in our house at the time. And it's a Raggedy Ann and Andy doll that my grandmother, they used to sit one on each of their beds and my uncle had given it to them. Then the dolls somewhere along the line went to my cousin and I stopped seeing him altogether. It wasn't Ooh. until five years ago when my mom sent the dolls back to me that I started seeing him again. Wow. So it's just, you're kind of a magnet, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's been with you for a while, this. I feel like, like it's just normal to you. You're just like, yeah, I see him. He comes. Most people freak out about that shit. You kind of handle it well. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 well, the time he came back was comforting because I was diagnosed with stage five kidney failure. Oh, God. And he came to me. Um, I had spent months thinking my life was over because the only way to come back from that is to have, you know, a kidney transplant. 10% chance, 20% chance you're lucky. Yeah, I woke up in the middle of the night, or I dreamt God in the middle you. of the night, him telling me it's not your time yet. I woke up, he was patting my arm, and he was standing on the side of the, my, my bed with my uncle, who was my godfather. And oh. he passed away several years ago. And then they both disappeared. Oh. A week later, I went and had my biopsy done. Biopsy came back as a healthy kidney. They redid the blood work. And over the course of the last four and a half years, my uh, numbers have been improving, and now I'm stage two. God bless you. Um, 20 million times over, you've been kissed by an angel, but how in the hell is that even possible without a transplant or treatment? Right. And the only other thing wow. I've done besides that is I changed my diet, lost some weight, and uh, exercise a little bit more than I used to. But other than that, I really haven't changed my lifestyle much. You, you kept a good attitude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you didn't say, right. well, it was me. You didn't throw the towel in. You contemplated it. What the hell's going on? But Heather, I had no clue. Seriously, from Adam to Heather, not PhD, none of that shit. From Adam to Heather, I had no idea that you triumphed that. Um, that's an inspiration. So I just want to get it off my chest. Wow. <laughs> Holy cow, I'm tearing up. That's... That's cool. I'm so glad I know you, and I'm so glad you're on my side. You, you're the people I want to know, man. I didn't have but about 32 friends two years ago on Facebook, and probably in real life less than that. And now i got people that I kind of trust and know and that are warriors like me that have survived through homelessness and the death of my mom and dying in a car accident. And then someone like you who comes from another spectrum, and you're still going. Um, a lot of people don't know. I'm not going to bring it up, but you've had some personal problems, too. Of course, your knee surgeries and stuff, but you, you're still coming up and you're writing a fucking book. <laughs> so so what is your excuse listening, okay? This <laughs> chick right here is getting a book on the way, and she's been through fucking stage five. Wow. Whew, we could be tearing up, girl. Um, all right, a couple minutes left. Ross is giving me a couple more minutes. That's killer. That is insane, Heather says. And people are like, yeah, that's that's crazy. No, that's not. That's someone else they says that's not Jimmy. That's cool. Um, much respect to Heather. People in chat, much respect. Great show. Um, Melissa Keen says, great show. Heather, Carlos Nunez, Terry York, George Cannon. You got them all thinking great show. And, and uh, you're an influence. That's awesome. Is there anything we could touch on before we call it a night that we haven't? Well I think we touched on it all, and then some. <laughs> I love that. Um, you deserve some of the spotlight, um, and I don't want to take up your time. I know it's Friday night. You want to go be with your beautiful family. So we're going to call it a night if you want to. Um, real quick, where can people find you? Let's give some shout-outs to some Facebook pages and shit real quick for okay. those listening. Well, Please. you can find me at, um, at Dr. Heather Lee, and it's spelled D-R, Heather, and then Lee, L-E-I-G-H. 
You can also find me at Exploration Paranormal. And then my uh, podcast vodcast is Expo- Exploring the Paranormal Vodcast. Then you could also find our website, which I promise everybody I will be updating it soon. <laughs> that's uh, explorationparanormal.com. And that's going to have links to order the book, links to access the documentaries and everything we're in, as well as links on how to um, find our events. But all the same stuff on the website, I will be sharing on my Facebook pages. Perfect. Simple, simple pimple. Heather, like you would say, Heather, L E I G H. Lee, L-A-N-D-O-N, Landon, PhD, sometimes it says, and I was not, check her out. She's all over the place. The Warren Legacy Foundation for Paranormal Research. She's a big member there. She's played some different roles, some different hats, but she's still um, she's still a big part of it. Chris McKinnell knows that. That's Ed Lorraine's grandson. He runs it. Um, I'm a member of that. So is Nicole Gaspard. She's got a radio show here on Wednesday nights. Um, my girl Heather's been asked to join. She might be in it soon, too, hopefully. She might try. So, um, yeah. This was a, a treat. I'd love to have you back on and maybe even on the vodcast. I'll have Heather as a co-host. Uh, mm-hmm. two, I'll have like a two Heathers are better than one night or something like that. Perfect. Sounds good. Yeah, I'll be and, starting uh, back up in uh, late September doing stuff. Perfect. I know you're a busy girl. You're on tour. Um, please, 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 on a personal note that I get you here and it's recording. I can throw this back in your face. You've got to hit me up when you come to Virginia because <laughs> I will drive the night. Me and Heather will get a hotel a dog friendly hotel with a bulldog. I want to meet you and I'd love to see Chris again. And I would love to get a picture uh, and a book signing and stuff. So please keep me posted. Okay. Perfect. Sounds good. I will. Thank you, Heather. Have a great night. Thank you everybody for historically haunted show here. Thank you on paranormal King radio network. This will be up on YouTube tomorrow guys, historically haunted and it'll be on the rotation. Have a great night. Historians Uh, stay blessed and stay positive. Have a good night. Hello, this is Adam Began, and I'm the host of Historically Haunted Show, where I talk about some very rare historical and haunted locations that I visited. I also interview some of the very best in the paranormal and cryptozoology field. So tune in every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Paranormal King Radio Network and prepare to be educated about the unknowns.